say welcome to part two of Perspective. If you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend you do. It's it's kind of a lead into this, so this may not make as much sense unless you watch part one. So pop over there, have a look at part one if you haven't already, and then come back and watch this one. Let me show you a measuring method that I use. Let's say you didn't know anything about perspective rules and you wanted to draw or you wanted to paint. Well, this method, this measuring method, is a great way to check things if things don't look right or if you don't know your perspective rules. So it's great to know the rules and it's certainly important to establish your eye level. But let's say for some strange reason you didn't know anything and you didn't establish your eye level. I'm making a presumption that everybody can read an analog clock because that's all we need to do these measurements. Let me show you what I mean. So what I tend to do is I tend to use this as a measuring system. So there's our clock. And what I do is I use the six and I pretend that the shorthand is there, always pointing to the six. And then what I do is I use that clock to work out the angle of any line, any perspective line in my picture. So if I look at the green line on the top of that roof there, all I have to do is I, I just move my clock over, either in my mind or in this particular case physically, and you can put the center of the clock on that green line, anywhere on that green line. And we put the center of the clock there, and then what I do is I just look at that green line and pretend it's the big hand of the clock, and look, if it was, That'd be something like, what, 22 minutes to 6? Or if I looked at the other side, it'd be 8 minutes past 6. Doesn't matter which side you look at, because the angle's the same. But the point is, you know and I know where the line is for 22 minutes to 6. Because the 6 is always going to be pointing straight down. And it's as simple as that. So if we can draw 22 to 6, we've got the angle of the top of that roof. Let's look at this other one. It's going to be about 23 minutes, 23 minutes to 6. Draw 23 minutes to 6. If we do this one, this purple line down here from the bottom of the building, look, it's nearly quarter to, 16 minutes to. If it was quarter to, it would be flat. But it's not. It's just, and you don't have to be, you don't have to have 16 minutes to, but you know it's just before, so you know there's a bit of an angle. People often get thrown out by really acute angles like this on the roof. So let's try it there. So we'll take it up and look at that. It's about, what, 27 minutes to 6, uh, 28 minutes to 6, whatever it is, it's fairly steep. And that's the important point that I want to make here. We don't have to be spot on. We're not doing architectural drawings. We just want the lines to go in the right direction with roughly the right angle. And I know a lot of people out there going to say, oh, you've got to, make, you've got to be accurate. That's fine, but if you're doing a loose watercolour, if you're doing you know, a, a gestural work, you just need the thing to feel like it's not falling over or the perspective is right. So there you go. If you've got a clock, if you can picture a clock in your head and you always think of six, you just got to work out where the big hand of the clock is. And you can work out all those angles. It's good to know your perspective. It's good to know your vanishing point because you know the direction it's heading in and you can do it freehand. You can check... But the measurement is a great thing if you're not sure what's going on. The question is, though, we're doing this on the computer. Okay, that's, you know, I can move the clock around. That's great. What happens when I'm out in the field? How do I work this out? How do I measure when I'm out in the field, when I'm outside painting? Well, let me show you that. So the first thing you have to do, as always, is work out where your eye level is. Now, when you're out in the field like this, what you need is your brush or a pencil and you hold it up against your eye and you just go straight out and you have a look at what that lines up within the scene. There'll be something there that you can line it up with, whether it be bricks or a mark on a wall or whatever it is, a branch and a tree. Now, because you're looking through the camera, your eye level is different to mine, so it's not going to be exactly the same. But for me, standing here, my eye level, if you look at those buildings in the distance there, you can see that there's a light. It's below that. It's, it's a little bit below that. If I can in the video, I'll mark where that is. But it will be different for you because you're looking through the camera and you're a different height to me. Now, how do you measure the angles? 
for example, the top of the cube building over there. Two important things when you're measuring out in the field. You have to make sure that your elbow is locked. You can't bend your elbow like that. As soon as you do that, everything gets thrown out of, out of whack. So pretend that your arm's broken. Pretend that it's in plaster. The other thing that you have to do is, because when we look at angles that are going away from us, there's a tendency for us to want to do this, lean our brush forward, but we can't do that because that throws everything out as well. So not only have we got a broken arm, but we have to pretend that there's a glass plate or a window in front of our hand so that we can't push the brush forward. The only thing you can do is rotate your wrist like that. So it turns the brush or the pencil or whatever you're using. Now, you've probably worked it out already. What happens is, remember our clock that I talked about back in the, in the studio? Six is always straight down. Well, this is the big hand of your clock. So what you do is you lock your elbow, you've got the plate glass in front of you, you close one eye and you line this up with whatever angle you're trying to work out. So for me, if I'm trying to work out the top of that cube building over there, I close my eye and it's going to look different for you at the moment. I hold my brush against it and I work out that it's something like 19 minutes to 6 if that's the big hand. But it is going to be different for you. Let's see if I can do it. If I hold the brush and I take it up to there and if that was the big hand of the clock, it would be what? Pretty close to 20 to 6. So that's what we do. Whereas if you look at another angle like the bottom here of the building, it's going to slope upwards slightly, but it's going to be about 13 minutes to 6. If we look at it again, if we look at this building behind me, it's got all these kinds of angles and the path as well. So again, just reminding you, broken arm, glass plate, rotate the wrist, big hand of the clock. Simple as that. So again, if I look at this, actually I'll come behind the camera so you can see your angle, and I turn my wrist and line it up with that, you can see that it's probably about equivalent of 10 to 6. And if I look at this path down here, and I have this tendency again, because the path goes away from us, I want to push my brush towards it. Don't. It throws everything out. So we just rotate our wrist, and we get the path down there. And if you look at that, that would be about, what, roughly 10 past 6. And you know how to draw. 10 past 6. So that's a, it's basically just measuring all those angles, all those times if you like. So you can get away with not knowing your perspective rules, but knowing your perspective rules, even out here, we can work out from this wall here where our vanishing point is and where our eye level is. So all those things combined, even out in the field, but this is your clock handle. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. So this lesson that you're seeing now is part of my online art community. It's one of the lessons I put on there. There's lots of other things like challenges, discussions, etc., etc. It's great fun. If you're interested, I'll put a link below for you to look at. But let's get back to perspective, shall we? Okay, so let's just talk about perspective of roads or paths or whatever going uphill and downhill. Now, as always, first thing you've got to do is work out your eye level and if you look at this line there's my eye level whoops i've got to freeze that for a minute i keep on saying my eye level in this section but it's actually your eye level or the camera's eye level just ignore the fact that i say my eye level remember it's the camera's eye level okay let's unfreeze so then what we do is we take for example the path here and we just put a line on the left hand side of the path and the right hand side of the path and you'll see as it goes up behind me the lines converge and they hit a vanishing point. Now the thing that makes this path look like it's going uphill is the fact that that vanishing point is above my eye level and that's the important thing here. If you want your path or road to go uphill vanishing point has to be above your eye level. Whereas if the path is going downhill, so we're going to swap now, and now what happens, I've turned around and the path goes downhill behind me. So 
We still establish my eye level and now when we look at the line along both sides of this path they still converge but that vanishing point is below my eye level and that's the important thing is that when it's going downhill the vanishing point will be below your eye level when it's uphill the vanishing point is above your eye level okay how far above or below has got to do with the steepness of that path or road but that's what you need to look for now if the road is flat let's have a look at this uh, road in in vienna it doesn't really matter where it is so if we take the left hand side of the road the right hand side of the road and look at where they meet where the vanishing point is it's on the eye level it's on the horizon it's bang right off in the distance there you can see that gives me the sense that the road's flat so let's have a look at this scene in Croatia. If I take my eye level line here and I drag it up, see that white line on that red building there? It's not straight with the eye level. So that tells me that that's not right. So I have to drag it down. I'm looking for something that will line up with it. So when I bring it down, I decide that it's just there, just above the level of the door there. Let's have a look at this road. Now, clearly, the road goes downhill. We can sense, we can see that the road goes downhill. So let me put a little green line on both sides of that road, one on the left, one on the right, and have a look, and this is important, have a look at where they meet, the vanishing point of that road. It is below our eye level. That's the important point here. It is below the eye level, and that gives the sense that the road's going downhill. Let's go back to measurement. Let's say you didn't have your eye level, so you can't work out where it is. Let's measure the left-hand side of the road there. We'll put our clock on it. Look at that. It's about, I don't know, 17 minutes to 6. And let's measure the other side. So if we put it there, and look, it's about 28 minutes to 6. Again, you don't have to be so accurate this saying. 21 minutes, 26 minutes, oh, hang on, I've put 25 instead of 26. It's not going to make a huge difference. It will still feel right. It will still look right. So there is so much more to perspective. I've only just touched on it. It's, it's basically the tip of the iceberg. But as I said, it, it's sufficient for 80-90% of what you do. If you need to know more, if you want to know more, there's lots and lots of great books out there. I've got a couple here that I'll mention. One of them is called Frame Perspective, and I know that I'm going to get your name wrong here, Marcos, by Marcos Mateo Mestre. I apologise for the bad pronunciation. But it, it really goes into a lot of detail. It's quite complex, but it's, it's really a, a detailed book on perspective. The other one is by Andrew Loomis, and it's called Successful Drawing. And there is a section on perspective, and as you can see, it also gets quite complicated, and the drawings can be quite detailed. Lots to learn from those, though, but it just depends on how far you want to go. But they're two that I certainly recommend. In summary, this is the approach. You establish your eye level. I expressed how important that is. Work out where your eye level is. Start drawing. If something looks wrong, start measuring using the clock method that I showed you. And then if something still looks wrong, you're still not getting it right, then fall back on those perspective rules that I was talking about, the converging lines to vanishing points, roads going uphill, downhill, etc. Yes, there's a ton more stuff you can learn about perspective, but at the end of the day, this will work for you. I hope you don't suffer too much with perspective anymore. Hopefully this will help you out. Good luck.